Hi there, and today in this project video slash tutorial, I am going to show you how to make your own DIY charcoal powered furnace that is perfect for melting small amounts of aluminium and other metals that have a melting point of 800 degrees celsius or lower and it is also perfect to forge steel and other high melting point metals to any shape or form you like the good side of this furnace is that it is small cheap to build and it has a low charcoal consumption because it is small and so for that it is perfect for those DIY builders out there who have a low budget like me so now with all of that said let us see what are we going to need for this video so the first thing that we are going to need is some water then we are going to need a measuring object it can be whatever you like as we aren't going to need exact measurements, just the same 50 to 50 ratio of sand to plaster. Then you are going to need around half a meter of 20 to 35 millimeter iron pipe. If you don't have iron pipe, you could use copper pipe, but it will almost melt with the heat. If you have no other option, go to the hardware store and tell them that you want a 20 to 35 millimeter in diameter pipe nipple which is very long if it is 10 to 25 centimeters long you could probably work it out but the longer it is the better but if you could get your hands on a steel pipe it is always better next for the insulation of our steel bucket we are going to need some fast drying plaster of paris or heavy hydrate calcium sulfate then to make the plaster of paris strong and heat proof you are going to need some sand this amount should be equal and i ended up using around 100 grams of sand and plaster of paris you are going to need a small one gallon steel bucket which is equivalent to around 4.5 liters and for the tools we are going to need a permanent marker a drill an 8 millimeter drill bit but if you have you could use a drill bit the same size as the pipe it would be best, but it comes at a hefty price than a normal bit. You are going to need a medium to fine mesh sieve. This is optional, but it makes the mixture better. And finally, a mixing bucket. So with all of that said, let us begin this project. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to sieve the sand. As I said, this is optional, but it makes the furnace smoother and lasts longer. So now, I'm going to mix equal amounts of sand to plaster of Paris, to a ratio of 50 to 50. I mixed around a 70 gram batch, but the measurements will differ a bit from yours. After that, before I added the water, I mixed up the mixture by hand, so that there won't be any clumps and different mixtures and ratios. Then, after that, we add water slowly until the mixture is like a watery paste. Then, after that, pour the mixture into the bucket so that it is about 4 cm thickness from the bottom of the bucket. Then, just give it around 15 to 20 minutes to settle and harden. Then, after it has solidified, we mix up in another batch with keeping the ratio of 50-50 plaster of Paris to sand mixture. And now, after we made the mixture, we'll just coat the inside of the bucket with around 4 cm of the mixture on the sides of the bucket, so that we have a fireproof layer coating the bucket. Then, after we have coated the insides of the bucket, we just grab a wet towel and smooth out any bumps or imperfections in the coating. After that, I mix up a small batch of the mixture and fix any holes and put more on the inner top part of the bucket. After that, I smooth out again the plaster and then clean the bucket from the outside. Then after that, we just let the plaster sit for around 5 minutes. After that, we are going to need to drill the hole for the pipe. Now remember that we are going to need to make the hole angular and being around 30 degrees bent to one side. It doesn't matter if it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. 
I also made a small hole, so that if there is a crucible fail, I can still pour the aluminium out. So now, I'm just going to drill the hole, and I'm going to do that by drilling a bunch of holes, and then using tin snippers to cut it out. After that, I'm going to hammer the pipe at an angle in the hole, so that it makes a tight seal. So before we are ready, we are going to need to clear out the holes from excess plaster. So now that we are finally ready and where we put the pipe, there is going to be a hair dryer attached to it. But I'm not going to show you how to do it right now, but I'm going to show you how to do that in another video, where I will test the forge slash metal melter. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and I think that this video is a new chapter in what I do, because I've always wanted to make a forge. Hopefully, in one of my next videos, I will make a knife from scrap metal. So, if you did like this video, don't forget to drop a like down below, and if you are new here, and you want to join me, subscribe. Also, if you have any problems, tell me down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.